kept seeing it over and over and over. And you have to understand, this wasn't dad saying, do these things. It was my kids just taking the initiative and just wanting to be a part of their dad's world. Right? And this whole thing just kind of grew bigger than I ever imagined in a hundred years. And I cannot be more excited because here's what I know. Those two steps right there are very, very powerful. Those are very big steps when you're only 12 years old. Do you agree? This little girl, no matter what happens today, I am so very proud of her just for taking those two steps. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would please give my amazing daughter, Panarina Nicely, a round of applause. Come on, baby. <laughs> and I am a 12-year-old entrepreneur. Also, you guys should know that I am facing giant fears by speaking in front of all you amazing people. Now you probably think 12-year-old girls are just watching Netflix and eating Pop-Tarts. And yes, I do that, but I'm also trying to inspire the world and teach them to do what I do. So today, I'm going to be telling you my story and how I got started with all of this. Okay, so I was born and I am being raised in Casper, Wyoming. And you probably think Chicago is the Windy City, but I assure you, Casper is definitely the Windy City. <laughs> we have also been the coldest city in the world at negative 46 degrees Fahrenheit this winter. But at least we're not as cold as Antarctica. <laughs> so I'm the oldest out of my two little sisters, Madeline and Isabella, and I'm probably the shortest <laughs> and most abnormal out of both of them. <laughs> So I'm a straight A student and a seventh grader this year and I loved being a cheerleader and obviously have the blood of an entrepreneur. <laughs> so you know everything my dad does, but you probably don't know what my mom does. She owns, unless you're a stalker, of course, <laughs> but she owns a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> she owns a restaurant called Philly Steak and Company, and they serve the best damn Phillies west of the Mississippi. <laughs> Knowing the crazy lady, she wants to start another business. My grandpa is also an entrepreneur with his own CNC shop. So in this slide, I got to skip school and come to Las Vegas for my personal photo shoot. But knowing our luck, the plane got delayed for what seemed like forever, but was really only three hours. So we went to the bar and had our drink of choice. <laughs> or maybe just a Pepsi. Come on guys, remember I'm only 12 years old. <laughs> But I was overly tired, so my parents agreed to get me a Red Bull. <laughs> so while we were on the plane, my dad and I were creating the slides for the speech that I'm doing right now, which means I didn't get to sleep the whole way. <laughs> um, 
my dad and I got into an argument on which is better, PowerPoint or Google Slides. So settle this debate for me, guys. Raise your hand if you think Google Slides is better. Come on, put your hands in the air. <laughs> OK, now put them down. Now raise your hand if you think PowerPoint is better. Put your hands in the air and wave you like you just don't care. OK, now put them down. Hey, you in the front, you voted for both. <laughs> we have similar arguments if Apple or PC is better, which I'm full on Apple, but my dad calls it crapple. <laughs> so, in this video, you can see my little sister Madeline, which was, she was two at the time, which would make me six. And Madeline today is eight years old, and she's right in the room with us. <laughs> we were making a green screen video on our trip to Disneyland. And one particular thing that was very funny about this video was that my little sister Isabella got called a hideous little baby by Maleficent. <laughs> yep, she was only four months old. It was really funny. So in this video, if we fast forward a few more years, I was eight years old and there was a two year period that was very hard for my dad and I. We didn't get to see my little sister Madeline. I guess moms do that sometimes. So we were vacationing in California and had just gotten back from Build-A-Bear workshop. And I got that cute little bear named Tropical. But my dad kept calling her Tinkle and it drove me crazy. <laughs> And it was about time I had to have an iPhone 5C. It was like trending. <laughs> and it had to be green in color, I mean pink in color, sorry. So I cut a deal with my dad if I shot a video and posted it on Facebook and got a hundred positive comments on it, he would get me the iPhone. I don't think my dad ever thought I would get more than a handful of comments. But much to his surprise, <laughs> I got over 300 comments saying that if, they didn't buy, if he didn't buy me the iPhone, they were gonna do it for me. <laughs> so for the record, I was still an honor roll student and my dad got me the iPhone one day while I was in school, but it was green in color. Shows how much my dad listens. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> so, if we fast forward a few more years, I was 10 and it was Super Bowl 2014. It was the Broncos against the Seahawks. <laughs> and I was a Girl Scout at the time. And there's a point in every Girl Scout's life where they have to hustle the Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> so I did it in a unique way. I decided to make a video and post it on Facebook. And in the video, I told you about my favorite cookie, which is still Thin Mint, and how to make a milkshake out of this. We sold a buttload of cookies. <laughs> Are you okay, Dad? And then... <laughs> Some people from like Texas, Vegas, Oregon, wanted to buy Girl Scout cookies, but my dad said we can't just jump on a flight to deliver Girl Scout cookies. It's very sad, but we still sold a lot. So, I already told you a little bit about the story where I didn't get to see my sister, 
but we had no contact with her. We couldn't call her, see her, nothing. So my dad and I had a great idea to make her a website called loveyoumadeline.com. And we shot all kinds of videos so she never forgot about us and how much we loved her. So when one day my dad was working on, I don't know, a project or something, <laughs> I decided to shoot a video for her. So I set up the camera, wired up the mic, turned on the lights, everything. And I had no help with it. So I shot the video saying how much I missed her and loved her. And when we were done with the video, this was the only help I got, by the way, is that we put it into Photoshop and found some backdrop images like SeaWorld, as you can see, Candy Kingdom, hearts, puppies, and we had my favorite church song at the time, which was Oceans playing in the background. And that's where the infamous shrinking trick came in. But for all you technics out there, it was just cross dissolve. Now you know my secret. <laughs> So my dad posted that video on his wall um, to say how proud of he was of his girls. He does it all the time. And turns out one of his old weatherman friends saw it, which you probably know him as Todd Gross, and he wanted me to do the product launch for, launch for him. So I decided to do it. And I spent my whole Saturday doing it, and it was in the summer. I could have, <laughs> could have been like swimming or something. But it took me over 20 tries to get, to get it right because I couldn't say the product name, which was Virtual Studio Simulator. <laughs> but I was 10 at the time and had this separator in my mouth, which made it hard for me to say S's. But when we were done with the video, we sent it back to Todd, and he ended up paying me a $50 Best Buy gift card. <laughs> and I was going to go buy some phone cases for my 5C, but they stopped making them. <laughs> so I traded $50 with my mom for the gift card. But it was a very good experience because it was my first paying client. Yes, a 10-year-old had a paying client. And that got me started with doing products for people. So this was the first time I went live by myself, and my dad was helping me, because I was like, what do I do? So he told me to just go live and talk to all of you. And then this was the one time that my sister and I went live, and my dad was always bribing me and Madeline to face our fears. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, we always saw my dad going live and getting so energetic and like pumped up. We thought he was crazy at some times, <laughs> but the members seemed to love him. And the real reason I started going live is I saw my cousin Hannah do it. And I thought if she could do it, then I could definitely do it. <laughs> so, um, I've always heard my dad preach from the day I was born to always face my fears. And I really didn't understand what that meant until now. <laughs> So 
I'm really shy by nature, like my dad, which it doesn't look like it, but he is. I'm an introvert, and I really don't like talking in front of big crowds, but I am right now. <laughs> and I remember two summers ago, it was in Vegas, and we were staying at, I think it was Circus Circus, and my sister and Madeline and I wanted this pair of heart-shaped sunglasses, and it was at New York, New York. But Dad said, if you want them, we're not taking Uber, we're walking the strip, and you have to greet a hundred people, and they have to greet you back. <laughs> so we kept walking the strip, and we kept saying hi, but a lot of people just walked past us and didn't say anything, so it took about two hours to get 100 people. <laughs> and when we finally got there, we got the heart-shaped sunglasses, and we went and got ice cream after, and then took an Uber back. <laughs> I don't want to walk anymore. <laughs> So that was a really good social experiment that I didn't realize what it was at the time, but it taught me to talk to people and not be so shy, which I still am. <laughs> so my dad always taught us to be positive. I know, he teaches us a lot of lessons. <laughs> but he told us to write three things we are grateful for, um, something we were proud of ourselves for, and to rate our attitude from one to 10. And he gave us these little journals, which I forgot it. Don't tell my dad that. <laughs> um, and mine just had um, wish on it. But then we also creating these giant vision boards, which on mine, I have Harvard College, my dream home, a trip to Paris, missionary trips, and a lot more. Just 12-year-old stuff, I guess. <laughs> Today, if we fast forward six years from where it all began, I'm 12 years old, but I don't look like it. I'm really short. <laughs> And I'm facing big fears, speaking in front of all you, going live on Facebook, working with businesses and advertising them, learning Photoshop and Camtasia, and doing a photo shoot, which was really fun. And just to be clear, I'm not an expert on any of this. Remember, I've only been alive 12 years. <laughs> But I am facing my fears and getting out of my shell and learning to just not be so scared to speak in front of all you and do all of this. And I found a lot of pleasure helping businesses grow and advertise themselves. And I've broken it up into four easy steps. And if you want to hear them, Raise your hand. Okay, so the first thing you need to know is that businesses have no clue how to advertise. They're using traditional, outdated advertising that is D-E-A-D, -E dead. And they really don't understand why it doesn't work, but some traditional advertising examples are yellow pages, TV commercials, radio ads, billboards, movie previews, and a bunch more. So the reason most of these don't work is there's no way to measure it, and everybody is on technology and Facebook, like my grandma has a Facebook. That's how well-known it is right now. <laughs> okay, so the first step 
is find your silent cries for help or the clients. <laughs> and I gave you a list of ways to find them. And the way we found ours, or I found mine, is that my dad drove around, we went to Walmart, a laundromat, found advertisements everywhere. There's some at the mall, and they're on each and every table, which nobody realizes, because that's just where you put your food. Um, we also found them in the bathroom stalls of our favorite restaurants. The bathroom was crazy. <clears throat> um, and we found some movie previews when we went to see A Dog's Purpose, which is really good. Um, two thumbs up and ladies be ready to cry. Or at least I did, like four times. But nobody was paying attention to them, probably just on their phones, on Facebook. So those are the mall ones. That's the laundromat. And there's just advertisements everywhere that anybody could find if a 12-year-old can do it. So step two is we want to interview our clients. Um, an easy way to do this is do somebody that you spend money with, which a good example of that is the ice cream shop because it was my sister and I's favorite place to get pumpkin ice cream with Oreos. Yes, it's a weird combination, but it's good. So the interview, the questions to ask the client are, have you done any advertising at all? Do you have a website? Do you have a Facebook fan page? Do you advertise on your personal Facebook? Do you have any special or coupons where the majority of your customers come from? Are your customers male or female? Do you know the age group of your customers? And then what hours is your business open? Do you have any information like emails on your customers? Um, who are your competitors? And then the biggest one that I think is what makes your business so much better than your competitors. And you just need to dig into their answers and then do some research on the business and gain their trust. So third step is we need to create a Facebook ad. And there are two ways to do it. You can do an image ad or a video ad. So we need to create the ad. And here are just three examples that I did creating an image ad in Photoshop for country superstar Terry Clark. And I just made those ones in Photoshop, but there are other alternatives like Canva, Uzine, or you can pay somebody on Fiverr $5 to make it for you. And then the second method is video ads, which we prefer. And some examples of the video ads we've done is my mom's business, the chiropractor, the taxidermist, the pastor, the realtors, and the ice cream shop. So the example with the ice cream shop is we were doing, it was in the winter, and all they sold was ice cream. And it was like negative 33 degrees. So who would an, an ice cream on that cold of a day? Definitely not me. So my dad had a great idea to make crepes on the menu, 
which are delicious. And that's the video that we did, and that's how we advertised his business. So the actual statistics for the Terry Clark ad that I ran were, we only ran it for a couple of days and generated over 400 clicks. Whoa. <laughs> And step four is you need to load the ad onto Facebook. So there's a bunch of steps in that. And step one, you need to choose your video or image that you shot. Um, create a headline. And then you need to get the information of your location, which you can do numerous cities. You need your age group that you're targeting, your gender that you're targeting, and you need to set up a $5 daily budget. And as your campaign increases, you can increase the price, and it, you can increase the budget, and it lowers the price. So it's really simple, and I know how to help businesses, but now you guys do too. They're out there. Silent cries for help are all around you. All you need to do is find them and help them. And before I go, I have a website called KatarinaNicely.com where you can contact me and learn more about me. And you can find my product that I did for like two days. It was a long process. <laughs> but that's all I have for you guys. Good luck on finding your businesses and have fun in Vegas. I know I will.